Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to sort out this Kona road bike. This is going to be new headset bearings, new chain, new chain ring, new cassette. We're going to sort out all the rear wheel bearings including the hub. Uh, we're going to sort out the brakes which actually as at the point that it came in were non-existent. They weren't working at all. And generally service and tidy up this bike and I think you'll be quite amazed at what a difference we make. So first of all you can see this is our chain stretch measurer. Now normally the little pointy bit on the right hand side there would be sitting on the right hand side of that chain. But this chain is stretched so far that even the chain reader we couldn't really read it. It's just way beyond. It hadn't broken, failed or anything else I don't know. But when a chain ends up with this much wear in it, it also wears the teeth away on both your chain ring and your cassette. They elongate those teeth. So if I put a new chain only on this bike, it would have just skipped over the gearing that was on the bike. The bike would have been unridable anyway. So this bike really is at the stage where it needs a new drivetrain. So we're going to replace those parts as well. And then we also had trouble with the wheel bearings as we were taking it apart. You can hear here now how noisy those, you know, those bearings are, are completely gone. So we're going to deal with the hub and the wheel bearings as well. So we're sort of analyzing all these parts as we're taking apart the components. We're like listening for wheel bearings, feeling headset bearings, checking the bottom bracket bearings. And we do that all the way through the bike as we're going. And you can really through experience and feel begin to know what needs doing and what has worn out and what you can salvage. So you can see here a massive build up of debris on this front derailleur. But we you know clean all that up and that's as good as new when that part goes back on and is more than salvageable each part we're taking out like on the brakes here they weren't working very well but actually the pads had very little wear in them so uh, i established that during the work which you'll see a little bit later on that actually it was all down to adjustment as to why those brakes were failing and not working now look up at that fsa logo on the top of that the teeth are pointing right out on that chain ring that was absolutely toast and life extinct so we removed that from the chain set and cleaned everything else up ready for a new chain ring on there so i mean look at this front derailleur you know this has been through the ultrasonic cleaner then it's been washed down come up like new you know even this rear derailleur when you think how debris ridden they were how many miles i mean this bike has done thousands of miles but cleaning those parts up that you know the parts that haven't that aren't wear parts like the actual cogs themselves come up lovely you know it's amazing really what you can do with a bike of this nature and how you can clean it up so all the parts that we needed to clean have gone through the ultrasonic cleaner even the spoke protector we've washed that down and that's all been cleaned up and looking nice and ready to go back on the bike the small chain ring the pedal arms all these parts were cleaning up and you know gradually we, we get this bike ready for the rebuild so anyway if you're new to the channel do hit the subscribe button do hit the notification bell and do drop us a comment remember to keep your comments positive you know we don't want any negatives towards the bikes these are all lent to us from riders who are having these bikes serviced by ourselves so drop a comment how many miles have you done on a, on a bike maybe between servicing it what do you do in your routine servicing how often do you maybe get it done drop all that in the comments we love to sort of interact and see what's going on and your thought processes and everything so you can see now we're just lubricating everything up all the pivot points all the thumb adjusters jockey wheels everything else even the spring some people often say why do we lubricate the spring well that one actually showed the reason why you could see how that had surface rust on it just protects that part puts a layer of film of oil and grease on there which will just stop that rust continuing to bite into that part and weakening it so you know it's always good to lubricate the springs a little bit of white grease here you might notice here that the chain ring that we're fitting is actually an aluminium one and it's not anodized black like the rest of the components the supply chain around the world is so upside down at the moment still from from covid and everything else that's gone on in the world recently and there's just some parts that from my wholesalers that i'm just still having problems getting like for like so obviously this is uh, all about making this bike rideable when it's almost at the point of unrideable so we put an aluminium one on there this rider will wear that part out and maybe next time we can find a black anodized one to replace that with in due course but anyway we're now cleaning up the wheel we knew we needed to deal with the bearings and uh, so we like a nice fresh clean wheel initially so now we begin to take out the hub remove the old bearings and clean up the cones and the cups and everything else ready for new bearings so you can see i just use a magnet to pull those out there was one there that was a little bit broken up on this side which i think is what was causing most of that noise and 
a little bit wear in the other ones as well so we get everything stripped down here we remove this free hub clean everything up and it'll be good to go now one thing i do do here which is sort of maybe not the way around that you often see in sort of how-to videos and things is that i actually slacken off the lock nut on this free hub ready to get the bearings out before i actually remove the free hub from the wheel it just the wheel itself i just use that to hold the free hub and to hold that process that i'm now doing here so of course out come all those little bearings it's amazing how many bearings you can have in a wheel there's uh, 25 of those on each side on there and then there's nine each side on the actual cups themselves and sure, 68 bearings in a rear wheel of this nature and um takes a lot of patience it's one of those jobs that when you very first do it will take you hours to do this job but as you get more practiced and more efficient at it it becomes less of a chore and less of a problem so there's a little rubber seal around here so i'm just using silicon grease around there because that just helps it recenter into its home in the wheel i'm then using the premium grease for the bearings around here then i'll use a shimano hub grease on the pores within the hub which you can just see i'm just adding on there now so we've already used three different greases on this one hub before we've even put it back together so you know it's amazing how many different greases i've got within my sort of arsenal of, of greases and everything some here that i've got that we've not even shown on camera yet we've got lubricants for specific jobs and specific things so we get all that back together just a little extra layer of grease on the bearing race there so uh, we begin to put that back together and then now we're actually at the stage where we can clean up the hub so we're getting off all the old grease we're degreasing all the parts here as we go and then we'll get that nicely back together and i'll know that when this all goes back together fresh bearings fresh greases all you know tightened correctly it's just going to be completely different wheel to the wheel that came in so again a little bit of white grease on the or general purpose grease on the hub there just so that that doesn't stick in the future torque up that bolt on the back there put everything back together and like I say I do this in the opposite way to what most do in that I then tighten that lock ring up finally as like a final part of when the hub's all back together and it holds it all nicely for me so I mean you can already see here what an amazing difference you know the the greases and the fresh bearings and everything clean there this is looking like a new hub and yet it's done thousands and thousands of miles this wheel you know and it's it's good to go again now like I say these brake pads the brakes were working so inefficiently when the bike arrived. Cable actuated disc brakes are often very, very hard to get to the bike point nicely. So we clean all those up. You can see on this disc the way it's scored around the edges and the way the center's dirty. So I rub this down with an emery cloth just to smooth that off. It stops that record player effect of a brake squealing. So we just clean that disc up. We go right the way around the edge just a little bit of wire wool on that center just to clean it up you know just nicely you can see there what a difference that makes just with a little bit of work the one on the left there as it came off the bike and the one on the right as we're now refitting it so i do these up opposites each other so I, you know left right left right and up and down up and down so i don't go round in a in a anti-clockwise or clockwise direction i do those opposites and torque those up put the spoke protector back on i do see occasionally our comments you know oh you shouldn't have put that back on but it's not our place as a shop servicing a customer's bike to remove components from a bike. It's our place to service those components and make sure that they work effectively and correctly. And it's up to the customer to either tell us to remove something or remove it ourselves. It's not for us to do. Now this headset bearing was real curiosity to me. You can see here we've got semi-integrated headset bearing. You can see what's wrong with that. Completely dried up and gone rusty, you know. So the headset would have been a very tricky one to ride on. And yet this bottom one, is a complete bearing race you know complete seal bearing so we've got complete seal bearing on the bottom and a semi-integrated bearing on the top race so it's a little bit unusual i don't actually think i've ever seen that before but that's the nature of bikes they throw up all sorts of different things as people maybe change things along the years or even manufacturers who are producing bikes that they may have gone to a bearing you know headset bearing company and asked for 10,000 sets and that's what they ended up getting and it fitted the bike so that's what they fitted so you do get these curiosities again a little bit of silicon grease on the inside of here there's actually a rubber o-ring seal on there and i just put a little bit of silicon on there to help it go onto the steerer tube and to seat correctly and nicely so we then just do everything up realign that bearing cap so the logo square 
and then we just start cleaning the bike down. Now this bike actually wasn't in for a detail service, it was in for a routine service with quite a few components being replaced and sorted out. We still wash the bike down when we service it, so we're just washing this down now, but we won't go through the T-cut and polish and uh, sorry, ceramic coat in the bike. You know, this is just a wash down, just to make the bike presentable after a service, but mechanically this bike will be spot on when it goes out, so we're just giving it a wash down now. But even then, with my sort of nature of wanting bikes to go out better and to allow a customer to feel like they can reconnect with a bike that may be aging, you know, they'll get that same connection as when they got it. Was I noticed here on the on the forks that it, it had a little bit of tape put over the forks to cover up a little bit of damage. You can see there as I, as I reveal it. I couldn't let that go even though it wasn't a detail. So we just cleaned that down. We just cut a couple of little vinyl protectors which you can see I'm just putting one on this side here, matte black the same as the frame, a little bit of damage here again from cable rub, so again another little matte black vinyl frame protector I put on there, and we did the same on the other side, so there's a little skim on the top there, and just this early sign of paint wearing out on this headset tube, and just, yeah, a little vinyl protector on there as well, as you can see. You know, just, just those nice little touches that will allow a ride to really feel oh, yeah this is really nice again you know and enjoy riding them and now we're on the rebuild stage so at this point we've cleaned and lubricated everything up we've got everything working as it should and now we just start to put everything back on initially we just do everything sort of pinch tight just so that we can make sure that everything's working before we'll go through the bike with the torque wrench so we get all the components back on all the cables back in again with this bike we never replaced any of the cables these are all the original cables but they were all working when the bike came in. I, I put it first, put it on the stand. I checked the brakes, checked the gears, checked their actuating correctly. So I know that I don't need to do the cables. So we're now just putting on a new chain. So we've got a new cassette, new chain ring, new chain, just a little bit of adjustment on there on the thumb adjusters. Just tweak it all up, make sure it's changing gear nicely. And I'm quite happy with the way this is now changing gear. This cable was actually a little bit long, so I just shortened that front derailleur cable. Now look at that disc pulling to one side as I'm actuating the brake. See how that's pulling to one side? That's because on these cable actuated brakes, they only actuate from one side, but it was adjusted incorrectly. So it was actually pushing it against the caliper housing itself and not against the pad. So I adjust that inner pad and you can see there now, there's very little movement in that disc now, and that's now actuating as it should. So the reason these brakes weren't working was basically because they were actuating off center and uh, just needed adjusting so I had to just adjust both sides to get the actuation spot on and then the brakes just transformed so they went from not working to fully working. Look at the way this is loose, we're just talking up now, we're going through all the various fittings, I mean these brakes were, I mean look at this look, incredibly loose, we just go through everything, talk everything up, we work front to back, so brakes, levers, chain set, derailleurs, pinch bolts, the saddle clamp was quite loose on this one. Saddle clamp, seat post clamp. You know, we just go through everything that we can. We work our way through and just talk everything up, make sure it's all spot on and right. So that I know that, I mean, I know this is a high mileage bike, so this is clearly a high mileage rider. So we just get everything right and perfect. Pump up the tires and we're really cracking on now with this service. We're beginning to work our way through. And just as a final detail, the handlebar tape you can see here was Pete was moving on the handlebars themselves, peeling up, and it had been sellotaped at one end. So we just unravel that, just unravel. I only need to go back to the hoods of the brake, the, below that was fine, and just re-tighten it up and retension it, and you know, just a fresh bit of tape on the end. And that's just a subtle detail that will make the world a difference to when this rider first gets on it. So you can see what a vast difference we've made to this bike. Thanks for watching. Do join us again next week. Do like and subscribe and do all the things you should to help us out as a channel and we'll see you again next week. So thanks again. Bye for now.